Welcome everyone to another episode of Kiwi Talks. My guest today was one of the top tier players of Super Smash Bros. Melee during the golden era and considered one of the goats, the character Samus. I'd like to welcome the legendary Wiz. How you doing? What's going on, man? Thank you guys for inviting me. Uh, first thing I want to know is, uh, how did you decide to become a Samus main, man? Was that, oh, sorry. Is it just because you're a Metroid fan or... Was it just well, wanting to give a middle finger to the haters that were saying Samus <laughs> is low tier? Well, originally, um, the way I started out playing these games, or rather Smash, and I picked Samus, is I was a, a Metroid fan. I played Super Metroid and old Metroids. Um, I, I still have to keep track, or rather catch up with the with the Metroids in between Super Metroid, uh, Metroid Fusion, all of those. Because when Melee came out, I was just, man, I, I barely... I barely played too many other games like that. Like I play other games, but my eyes was just set on melee. Once I got into, you know, going to travel and stuff. But anyway, I didn't start out with Samus. Um, I started out Smash Bros. with Luigi. I wanted to use Luigi at first oh, for Smash true. Bros. The first one, yeah. but you couldn't use Luigi. He wasn't a default. He wasn't in the default roster. Yeah. So I was like, Dad, who can I use? I used a little bit of Link, but then I used. Kirby for a tiny bit just until I earned Luigi. As soon as I earned Luigi, I was like, forget you, Kirby. So then I, because I like Luigi out of the Mario Brothers. So I picked Luigi for a little bit. And the person that uh, enticed me, or rather gave me interest to play with Samus was one of my, one of my brothers. Um, He was playing with Samus and I was using Luigi. And after a while, I started like looking at Samus. It's like, although I played the games and I liked her games, I was like, hmm, Samus is, she looks pretty fun. So I was like, let me try out Samus. I tried her out. And then from there, I just started playing with her more and more. And then she, she became my better character than Luigi. And then I used, I basically transferred my skills from Smash 64 to Melee. And then from there, I was like, oh, I got to stay with her. And I thought she was just good. Everyone thought she wasn't that great, but I thought she was amazing. Yeah, and I suppose uh, things like wave dashing really helped. Because Samus is oh, quite yeah. floaty, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, wave dashing helped. Uh, it helped her definitely in the beginning years of uh, Melee. It set her aside from a, rest, a lot of the cast. Yeah. So uh, how did you find the play style that you ended up with? Was that a long I, time of fine-tuning it? Or was it just straight just, out the gate? Well, out the gate, I was just like that. And <laughs> I'm, about, I'm like a creative pl- uh, player, so I'm always thinking of new things to try out and see how can I implement it. Um, some people think some of the things I came up with was like bonkers, um, unorthodox, and it's not applicable in matchups. But then it's funny, like the stuff people thought that was terrible for me to use, they now, after all these years, they're now starting to use it and, and be like, oh, this isn't too bad. And I'm looking at them. See what I'm talking about? Like, you don't understand, like, hugs. I used to always tell him when we was, um, years ago, I guess, early 2000, I guess, 2005, 2006, I used to always tell hugs, you know, you got to use bombs more, implement bombs more. But he thought that it wasn't that great. So then when I retire and I wasn't around that much in the community, and rather in regards to melee, I didn't enter tournaments, I didn't travel like hugs. Um, hugs, I see, like, all his streams and some of his videos and even in tournament. He saw us like slowly implementing bonds. I'm like, hugs. It's been like eight years now, nine years. <laughs> and now you're implementing bombs. And he's like, West, West, man. No, it, it's, I didn't want to use it and just not know how to use it. I, I didn't want to just spam. But listen, sometimes you got to like, just put yourself out there and do, you know, trial and error to see when it's applicable, when it's not. But a, a lot of guys just don't, they don't like, the problem is a lot of these guys, they don't like to lose. So they kind of stunt their growth from not experimenting on the entirety of the character's toolkit. And that's, you know, that's literally how I base my skill around. Like even even though that I'm even now that I'm back in the scene, I'm still like testing things out and my mind is a little bit different. And some in some aspects, I think I'm better now than when I was younger. The only differences between now and when I was younger is that I had more time. So the, that particular style I had back in the days, I was more precise at using that style than now. Right now, it was kind of, since I, you know, I have a wife, I work, yeah. you know, I do streaming, I make content. It's tough for me 
to do, you know, to have as much time just dedicated to getting good at melee like I used to. So that's a big difference between, you know, me and now. I mean, now and uh, then. Yeah. So how much time did you put in back in the day? How many hours per day? <sighs> Man, I can't even. It was like, put it this way, it's like a job. It was literally like a job. I would say at least eight hours. Eight hours least, a day. Is that straight? Would you have breaks? I mean, I'll do breaks and stuff. It all depends, though. If we had <laughs> sessions, forget about it. Yeah. We'll go to somebody's house and play, or we'll go to a tournament. It was either a tournament. But the good thing, the thing about me and some of my people in Daily Alliance, we had balance. We weren't just like, like, if you looked at us back in the days, we, we did not look like gamers at all. Both, some of us look like, I'm not even going to lie, some of us look like gangsters. Some of us look like, <laughs> Some of us look like jocks. Some of us look like, I said, jocks, people who just play sports. So, but the cool thing about DA is that, you know, we had like a balance. Like mm. we weren't only playing games. You know, we weren't only good at sports. We were able to, you know, do both. And st also still have somewhat of a social life. So, you know, uh, some, some guys are still going out with girls, being able to go to the movies. Uh, unfortunately now, I, I think uh, gamers, some gamers these days, they're missing that balance. That's the issue. I think some people, or rather just in general, they're missing that balance between having a social life, spending time with their family, their girlfriend, sure. or what have you, and playing games. You know, it, no matter what you do in life, it's got to be some kind of balance. You know, anything you do way too much that is harmful to you. Hmm. So did you use the psychology of people thinking that you're a gangster or like, a jock to, to mess with them like oh because some uh, people right they if they're not used to being around like people from the hood yeah like, if, they're, if they're playing against you it would mess with them mentally i i guess so i mean i didn't purposely use it but i the thing is too i grew up trash talking because yeah well that's right me, yeah me and my uncles we used to play games all the time with each other. We used to talk crap to each other all the time. So it was like I adopted that style of play when it came to games. And, you know, I utilized that to not really intimidate my opponents, but just show no weakness to my opponents. Because even if I'm losing, I'm still talking crap to my opponents. But And Man. they're looking at me like, yo, I'm beating you. Why are you still talking crap? I'm like, yo, okay, I'm just into it. Or, and if I'm beating them, they get all, you know, sad but honestly my intentions when i talk trash is obviously to get under the opponent's skin but at the same token i want people to continue to try to get better to come at me i wanted like the endless cycle of oh i can't stand Wes. i want to go beat him yeah and then if they beat me i'll be like oh i can't i can't stand you i'm gonna come back and beat you but it's like at the end of the day it's nothing personal it's just you know all competition and you know just for the love of the game yeah that's what i that's where i think the disconnect, especially nowadays when it comes to trash talking, like people, they have a misconception about trash talk now. Like they saying it's toxic. Obviously, there's a certain degree. There's a limit to trash talking. Like I tell everybody, you trash talk, but you keep it in the game. And obviously, it depends on a person. But for the most part, in my opinion, uh, this is competition. Nobody's your friend. I'm sorry. Even your boys on the battlefield, they're not your friend. Obviously, like I said, you don't take it personal. You don't put your hands on them. But you could take, you could talk a little smack here and there just to add entertainment to yeah, it. You don't want to, you sure. don't want to play games that it's like you know, some golf match, you know? So I'm like, that's why I, I look at uh, the way the drama starts with people saying trash talk is, to uh, trash talk is toxic. I'm like, that's, that's not true. That's not true at all. They think that. They don't think that other sports have trash talking. No, they think that that's not the case. But the reason why they don't know that a lot of these players be talking trash to each other is because they're not mic'd up on the field, on the basketball court or the football field. Hmm. They be talking so much trash to each other. You ever, you ever um, YouTube or been close to like a football or basketball court? Forget about it. Those guys be talking so much trash. You ever heard of uh, stories of Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan? Yeah, uh, Charles sure. Barkley, all those guys talking trash to their opponents on the court. But you don't know say it's toxic. No, it, it just fuels the fire underneath, you know, fuels the fire of people just to, 
you know, become better players to beat them and shut them up, you know? Yeah. But I mean, some of the smash competitors at that time were quite fragile personalities. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Real introverted, you know, they had a autistic side to them, I suppose you could say. So like, they're probably not used to it. But would you yeah, ever take advantage of that? I wouldn't take advantage of it. It's just my nature to talk trash no matter who you are. I didn't even care. I'm telling you, if you pick it up, if you were grandma, you pick it up the sticks, you uh, <laughs> you're you a girl, a kid. I'm talking trash. I'm serious. Uh, this is a story, right? J-Man. Um, J-Man is like this old school uh, melee player, right? He was mm. young. He was younger than me at the time. He was like maybe in his maybe 12 or 13. I was like maybe about 19, 20. I was older than him at the time. And I didn't care. As soon as he picked up those sticks, I was talking trash. It got so bad, he would he would, he would would say, I'm going to get my big brother. I'm like, go ahead, get your big brother. He still ain't going to beat me in Smash. I'm like, go ahead. I'm like, and then after the game, like, yo, calm down. We, we in a competition. You can talk trash to me and be all good. Like, he was, there were times I almost bring him to tears from the trash talking. Well, it's crazy because, like, obviously, I've seen the Smash <laughs> Smash Brothers documentary, and yeah. it, it, so many personalities and so many people look sad when they lose. <laughs> and I'm like, man, like, and you seem like a dude that has thick skin. Well, compared yeah, to a lot skin. of them, yeah. yeah, compared to them, I have thick skin. But obviously, everyone has their their weak points. Everyone has their, you know, the areas that it might get to them or not. But for the most part, in regards to the Smash Brothers community, I have to explain, like, I don't really let much, not too much bother me, like, win or lose. It really doesn't. Um, I think I don't really get mad at people or rather look at people, like, in a negative way if I see them get real sad over the game. Like, I can understand they get sad, but my whole thing is this, right? You can get sad over the game, right? Because, you know, you put in a lot of your time money effort into it and for you to lose to whatever I mean, it just makes you feel like why am i doing this you know mm-hmm. so i can understand it being sad and things like that but my thing is once you get the, don't stay in that sad mode that sad state get your behind up start grinding get better that's it keep going don't ever my thing is don't ever ever stay in that sad state that's my whole motto like i've been I've been kind of disappointed at my performance. And I'd be like, you know, I, on my way home from a time, I'd be like, dang it, Wes, you suck, man. Dang. And I'd just be sad. You know, I'd be a little sad. But then right away, I'd be like, yo, we're going to go back. We got to go hit the lab. We got to do what we got to do. Mm. Yada, 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 you know? And that's the mindset that a, a competitor should have playing Smash Bros. or just any uh, esports game, period. Yeah. So do you and the Deadly Alliance crew constantly kind of uh bait with each other or do you kind of uh provide yourselves with each other's energy to try and hype yourselves up oh yeah especially at tournaments man forget yeah. about it people used to <laughs> we used to terrorize tournaments like what well, literally we'll be like yo let me know when you have i would tell like especially my boy compton or compton who's the who's the trash talkers of the other crew it was the top trash talker was me compton chris I'm probably missing a few other people, but those those are the we the three headliners. But we used to always be like, "Hey, let me know when you play." As soon as we find out uh, somebody in our team played, we'll like sound the alarm. We're like, <laughs> we'll tell everyone else, "Hey, so and so's playing." There are at least five of us behind him talking talking trash, like saying, "Like, come on, let's go, you got it." And then I would like get them hyped. You yeah, know? yeah. How long have because uh, how have you managed to stay? so um tight with the crew for this long oh because we're you know it was like a in the beginning the way we formed da was basically we wanted to be the best you know the best crew in smash or rather team in smash so what we did was i noticed that uh in order to get there we all needed to we needed the best of each character Hmm. so what we started doing was started to look for people who were the best for each character in the game that way we all and then put them in da and then that way we'll have the best training because there'll be no weakness there'll be no character that'll come out of nowhere um that we didn't know how to fight so that was part of it and the other part after a while it came 
to where, you know, you have to be a cool, you know, we have to be able to mix well with you, like, you know, down to earth and cool. And although that was the case, there were, everyone, the funny thing about it is, although we had that in effect, um, people, everyone was kind of had different personalities. And obviously some people bump heads, but at the end of the day, most of us are still friends t- today. You know, I've, I've, you know, most of the, like some of DA, like I would really say half of DA is like my best friends. And we all still talk here and there. We check up on each other. I don't think everybody checks up on everybody, but you know, we have little subgroups that, that chill and talk to each other. And, you know, for the most part, I wanted to build a brotherhood, you know, mm. that way, even outside of smash, people look after each other and we still do to this day. You know, we do, that's cool, we do man. mental, yeah, we do like mental checks on each other to, to make sure everyone's mentality is okay. You know, uh, we see, I, we, you know, we check up on each other here and there, like a decent amount of us, you know, even if it's not like every day, you know, we try to check up on each other for the most part. Are you guys still situated quite close to each other? You guys all in some of us, yeah, yeah. I would say still in New York. I would say a handful of us are still in New York. Yeah, yeah. This probably let me think about it. Mike G's not in New York. Compton recently uh moved. Um, who else? That's really about it, to be honest. Why do you call himself yeah. Compton oh, if he lives oh, in New P- York? And, and PC Chris, oh yeah, PC Chris, he's gone. He's like I think California or something like that. Yeah. Um. You said, uh, why do you say, oh, Compton is because uh, I think his culture, his family, because uh, I think he's from West Indies, and his family, oh, right. they have something to where uh, they call you Compton. They call, like, people in their family Compton. So that's what I was, so I was like, you're not even that's, from, that's buzzy. from California. Your name is Compton. Yeah, yeah. That's funny, right? Yeah. It's weird, so, yeah. So how do you prepare mentally? for a tournament right because it doesn't uh-huh. matter how much you practice if you're not in the right state psychologically uh-huh. you're uh-huh. you're gonna screw up right yeah what i used to do during my heydays i used to um you know try to warm up before a tournament but the two keys of me uh readying myself for the tournament is i used to um rather for the tournament and during the tournament I used to listen to music. So on my way to the tournament, me and my friend, um, Kamal, a.k.a. Rockman, we, there was a, one of our favorite songs. It's called um, Eminem because he's like one of my favorite uh, rap artists. Yo. We used to listen to this song called... Uh, There's two songs, actually. Uh, it's called Lose Yourself. And then we used to listen to um, Till I Collapse. Till I Collapse, we listen to most oh, of the bro. time. Both those songs are hype songs, bro. Yeah, so those yeah. songs used to get us ready for the tournament. And then to maintain my mental, uh, my mentality for doing matches, I used to bring lollipops in your tournaments. I got that from, um, I used to, I was thinking about uh, chewing gum, but for some reason, as a young lad, I don't understand. Gum never used to just last. I used to swallow it. I don't, so I was oh, like, you know no. what? Let me stop. So let me get lollipops. And the lollipops was something to keep you, keep my nerves at ease and keep me fine, you know, keep me uh, grounded. And I got I got that from Michael Jordan because I remember Michael Jordan, he used to say that uh, people used to ask him, what did you do on the court to stay focused and calm? He used to chew um, gum. It was called Big Red. He used to chew that. Mm. So I adopted that, but just used it. Uh, I just did it with lollipops. That's it for a while. Then after a while, I stopped messing with lollipops because, I mean, luckily, I still got all my teeth. I don't really have cavities or nothing like that. I've been maintaining oh, cool. myself. <laughs> but I was like, all right, I can't do this anymore. So I just started using, um, I started chewing gum. But luckily, I have I didn't really, um, I wasn't swallowing gum. I, I, I was able to control myself <laughs> to not swallow gum anymore. So I just started using gum. And then now... I don't really use that stuff. I'm able to, I guess, just control myself naturally now. Yeah. But would yeah, you have but, to have it for the whole day leading up to the, the the battle or would you have it just before you're about to... Oh, just before ahead. my battle. I just yeah, pop, just before you know, your pop match, a yeah. lollipop in and then, you know, and that's it. And then as soon as I'm done with the lollipop, um, if I'm not playing on matches, I wouldn't mess with a lollipop until I'm playing another match. And, and I'll just keep doing it that way throughout the whole day. 
Mm. And, I, and I, I wouldn't mess with it no more. Nice. But that's that, 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 but that's how I calm myself down. And then uh, sometimes I would listen to music, depending. I'll listen to different songs and put it on repeat just to keep me, you know, going. Yeah, yeah. So was there a specific move that Samus has that maybe you were trying to perfect and it took you ages? Well, a super wave dash, that's, that's one of the hardest moves to do. And I'm yeah, still trying to, I'm still, still to yeah, this I'm day, still I can't even do it. <laughs> I'm still trying to master it. I mean, there's Samus players that are slightly better than me, but they're still not master. They can't do it all the time, 100%. But yeah. like the, Samus, the thing about Samus, I feel that she's probably one of the most, or if not the most technical character in the game, mm. because she just has so many different, so many different things going on with her. And the issue with it is that I call her the Batman of the game because she has a lot in her utility that you can use. But the thing about her is you got to know when to use it. You can't spam everything that she has. So that's that's the meta with Samus, knowing when to use what she has at the right times, as opposed to other characters like Fox and Falco. Like you could kind of use the same stuff and just rinse, wash and repeat. And if you have a good... um, if you have good mind games, it's just good mentality as a player. You, you know, you'll go far with those characters. But Samus, that's not the case. Yeah, because how do you even test yourself against certain characters, right? Because like in tournaments, what Marth, Fox, Falco, Jigglypuff, like the typical characters. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And obviously, if you're playing as Samus, you'd have to yeah. accommodate uh, your style to each character that you're versing. Right. Yeah. See, that's another thing about Samus. You have to. Some characters they could just almost play the same against other characters, but Samus she has to play complete, completely different against everybody in the cast. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, how how do you prepare for that? You just gotta play. You gotta honestly. You just gotta play different people and just get your take your lumps or receive lumps. But the thing about it, even the thing about me back in the days is that I used to always play any level of player because i always i didn't want no stone stone unturned in regards to styles and different things like you you could always learn something new from any level of player even if Mm. it's somebody who doesn't even who's not as good as you there's little things that they could do you could pick up and say oh wow i didn't think about that and they may not even know that they did it they probably did it by accident but since you're better than them, you can see what they did and be like, wow, hmm. maybe I can apply that here. It might be better to be applied here. And then that's when you add that to your game. That's what I used to do back in the days, especially against other Samus players that wasn't as good as me. I used to either watch them or play against them. And they used to do certain moves to me. I'm like, why would he do that there? And I was like, that's not a good move. But, I mean, that's not a good move to do there. But I think... I need to start experimenting with that move because he caught me a little bit with that. Maybe I'll be able to figure out how to use that move a lot better than him. And Mm. I I would just add that stuff into, I do that now since I'm back into the community. I mean, I'm it's, it's a humbling experience now because a lot more, there's a lot of more, more Samus players and a lot of them, a handful of them, I, I would say are better than me and I'm learning from them. Usually it'll be the up. It'll be the other way around. When I was doing my heydays, like a lot of Samus has learned from me. So it's kind of like, it, to me, it's like a new learning experience. So that what that's what excites me about coming back into the scene. It's like a breath of fresh air where it's like, I'm not starting from the beginning, but I'm, it's like I'm starting a new chapter to where now I have to upgrade my kit and learn different things, you know, and see where it takes me. This episode of Kiwi Talks is supported by Manscaped, the leaders in male grooming, and they've just launched the Performance Package 4.0, which includes the Lawnmower 4.0, which is a great tool for trimming hairs pretty much anywhere on your body, whether it's on your back, your arms, your backside crack, below the waist, doesn't matter, works a treat. And on top of that, you've got the Crop Reviver and the Crop Preserver, which are great hygienic tools, a spray and a cream to make your downstairs smell great. On top of that, we also have jockeys, we have a travel bag, and of course, the weed whacker for getting rid of those hairs inside your ears and nostrils. This is an amazing package, and all you need to do is go to manscaped.com and use the code KiwiTalks for 20% off plus free shipping. 
So did you ever do like a Mewtwo King and start breaking down frame by frame? Because you know how he was renowned for I that? used to do that with my friends. Mewtwo King was more extensive than me. Yeah. But we used to do that with, um. there was this thing called Action Replay for uh for GameCube. And what that does is it, it, uh, it opens up the like the developer mode of certain games, especially melee, and we were able to see the wireframes of characters. So we was able to see their hit boxes, hurt boxes, and some of the other features we didn't know what it meant because you know we're not really a developers at the time. So yeah. we would see certain things like the stages. We'll see like the uh the coding of the stages or like numbers next to the stages or like just the like the under, I guess behind the scenes of how the stages look and we didn't know what that meant only thing we did know was is the the hurt box and hit box of characters and then slow down frame by frame you know, pause the game and and basically slow it frame by frame and we'll count frames like that but i mean i wish i could go back in time and kind of take advantage of that a little bit more mm. but we we did we knew about it and we implemented it at certain aspects of our game, but we didn't make it like one of the one of the primary components of our game. Hmm. So what was it like for you during that era watching a lot of these guys come into fruition, right? Like Mewtwo King and Mango uh -huh. and yeah. Zine and Ken, like all of these guys, like you watching them obviously at these these tournaments yeah. and seeing how good they were. Like what? What was what was the vibe like during that time? And then also, whenever you watched it, how did it motivate you? Oh, I always just wanted to keep playing so I could. Oh, in the beginning, I would beat Mutual King up. Um, and uh, but I knew, I knew based off his work, his uh work ethics, and him as a player, I knew he was going to be probably one of the best players. I already, I had a feeling. Yeah. Not uh, not of not my first interactions with him, but just his mentality in regards to how good he wanted to get at the game and the things he did, no matter what, to get the win. Like some people, they want to win in style all the time. I was a little bit like that, but Mewtwo King, he's not like that. He's just trying to win. Whether if he has to run the clock out, shoot you to death, or grab the ledge, do whatever you got to do to win. Like he was very disciplined. So when do what he got to do, like he was literally like a robot, like everyone said. So mm. it just took him some time to to develop his skills and what he really wanted to do. So uh, after a while, he just he just grew out of the community for for a good amount of time. Like there was a point in time where he was destroying Ken. Like there was a crew battle. He almost I think he either took out the whole crew or almost took out the whole crew. Like he annihilated everybody there. So that was like maybe like the peak or or either close to the peak of Mewtwo King. Yeah. Uh, PC Chris, I already knew he was going to be good because the first time I played him, I mean, I beat him too, but I knew as time went by and me and him was training with each other, I knew he was going to get good, especially the group of people outside of me he was playing with. He like, he absorbed things like a sponge and he adapted pretty well. Um, Armada, one of uh, Compton told me to watch out for him. I didn't see too much of Armada. Cause he was from, you know, it was Sweden, right? He's from Sweden, so yeah, I knew, I knew that he was going to be good, based off of Compton, because he told Compton told me when Armada was super young, super young, like he didn't win the tournament that Compton went to, but he did pretty well, and he Compton told us like, be careful, this guy Armada, he, he's he's gonna be real good, mm -hmm. so that kind of you know put a little, uh, put something back on my mind to look out for him. And Zane, to be honest with you, I didn't hear about Zane until maybe five years or so ago. Cause he's like, a, I think he's like a dot kid from what I remember. So at that point in time, I wasn't, I wasn't playing the game. I wasn't playing melee that much during the documentary. Like I got recorded in a documentary, but I, I think I was more so focused on, I think either Brawl, um, me and my, one of my best friends, not me and him formed a nonprofit organization or, I think it was a uh, project and one of the two times, but yeah, during that time, Zane, I think was on his little rise, but he yeah. became the Zane. He is like, I guess three years ago. Right. And I think H Hugs called it that. He said, Zane is going to tear 
he's gonna cause a big tear in the community. You know, that's what he's doing. The guy's ridiculous. Yeah. You mentioned the Smash Doco. How much material was actually recorded on your end for that that never made air? Because that's it a, was a lot. So long. It was a long doco, but <laughs> yeah, it was I a can lot. tell it watching it, I'm like, there must have been heaps of stuff that yeah, Wes, was... Wes recorded that never made air. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot. There was a lot because you know the documentary wasn't about me, so they can't be yeah yeah you know? for sure for and sure. The, fun, the funny thing about it you know people agreed and I, you know i even said it too um the two people that i felt that they should have um either added in a documentary or at least had an extended version of the documentary is probably myself and true that because you know we did you know we were a major part in the community during i during that time behind the, the scenes during, yeah. yeah so we thought about it but yeah um my parts of the documentary, a lot of it, I think a, a decent amount of it was cut out. Uh, the part where he was in my, uh, about my parents' house that I was at at the time. And the other one where I think it was at Apex, I think it was Apex 2012 or 2013. He interviewed me as well. Uh, I guess he cut it, but I heard that, I guess a year and a half ago, uh, Samox, he was releasing the um i guess the director's cut of the smash doc so the full interviews of people but for some reason he didn't get to me yet he hasn't gotten to me yeah, i guess he's I was, busy i was gonna ask that because i could see that there's uncut footage of some of the other yeah he had milk tea, but i, think I he haven't had seen Ken. anything of yours yeah yeah, yeah milk tea can i think chillin dude but i you think you have to hit him up bro yeah I, I mean i don't be stressing people like you you know you do it when you can when whatever you you know Whenever you feel, whenever you see fit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I honestly, I was just, you know, appreciative of him having me or rather me being part of the documentary because it's like history, you know, oh, it's, it's a, a big it's part. A, it's a good documentary. I highly recommend yeah, it good. to anyone who hasn't seen it. Do you yeah, know if he's going to do any follow-ups with, um, I mean, because Smash has grown yeah, ridiculously massive now. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also become a bit fragmented as well because you've got yeah. the purists with Melee and then you've got, the ultimate fans as well mm -hmm. and the toxicity of it and then you add in I the just, other other fighting games as well it's just but when when you're actually there at an event uh -huh. is it still toxic or is it more the online stuff it's and just it, online man yeah. dudes are dudes are just talking uh, trash keyboard thugs man that's all it is but because when you go to like fgc just like you know street fighter and it was mixed with smash everybody's just chilling with each other to be honest with you nobody's booing each other like you know you don't see the street fighter marvelous capcom community booing smash brother players like oh my god boo man go get it you know they don't do that and we don't do the same we don't do that to them either like everybody's just chilling everybody is either you root for the person i mean you root for that game or you just be quiet or whatever or you root for that person or you you know you boo against that person but you don't boo against that particular whole game you know so that's generally how it is. It's just talk. People just talk and smack. Okay. Well, so it's not actually like that. Because I was wondering, I'm like, no, no, dude, no, no, no. Because you know how there's some people that think that Smash Brothers isn't a real fighting game? You know? It's a platform fighter. So it's a fighting game, but it's its its own like sub genre, sub, you know, it has its own. It's like fighting games like this. And then Smash is like right here because. It's different from your your traditional fighting games, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I know so that's the only difference. I, yeah, I know you're heavily involved in the community, and you're trying to try to help people out and mm -hmm. try to get them out of crime and all that. And you've gotten them into Smash. Has that been yeah. like really rewarding? Yeah, we've seen. Oh well, me and my one of my best friends, uh, and a few other members of Deadly Alliance, we uh. Yeah. We formed a nonprofit organization called SOS Gamers, and we yeah. utilized, yeah, you know, we did gaming to where we would, we did a whole bunch of stuff. You know, we've done stuff with uh breast cancer awareness. We done March of Dimes. We done stuff with the New York City Police Department, community stuff with them, and we've been in also in a bunch of schools around the uh, New York City, and we we formed a program to utilize. Um, video games to teach them life building skills like teamwork, communication, sometimes like little things like math. So we, we have programs like that in schools. That's unfortunately, so cool. we had unfortunately we had to put it on hold because actually we were supposed to do 
like a big pro a big project in different schools, but this was like around 2019, leading into 2020, something like that. When did COVID hit? I think March uh, of 2020. March, right? It's around about March 2020. 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So around that time, we were supposed to be doing programs inside schools. We had something that we was gonna launch, but uh, unfortunately, COVID just made everything so difficult to get in schools, and you know. Every few months, kids are allowed to come back to school. They all of a sudden, oh, homeschooling, back to school. So we yeah. was like, all right, you know what? We're going to wait. It's either we're going to wait till schools figure out what they're going to do, or we're going to try to do something um, online, you know, do something digital to where we don't have to. We can still do, uh, we still reach the goal. We'll still do the mission of helping, you know, teaching kids these things. But you know, everybody's safe, like the staff is safe and the kids are safe. So that's what we're, you know, we're, we're trying to put together a piece. But even then, we're still, COVID is still crippling the situation because we're still trying to figure out indefinitely what the kids, you know, what the schools are going to do. Yeah, so for you know, sure. So I suppose yeah. a lot of these projects that you were actually going to do at the school, you'll wait yeah, until the gonna, pandemic is over and then resume yeah, them? Yeah, we're going to try to resume them um, as soon as the pandemic um, dies down hopefully sometime that soon is. maybe <laughs> I know whenever that is if we feel that the pandemic is not going to die down and at the very least we see that we might have to convert things digitally then we'll do it that way as well but we yeah. we, we kind of like I kind, I'm kind of more like hands on I like you know I'm a personable per person so I like go into the school you know chilling with the kids just seeing their reaction talking to them playing games with them you know i'm not although it's cool to be doing things at the luxury of your own home i'm more of a person i like you know i like just being next to people and chilling with them you're a people and unfortunately yeah I'm a people person so I, unfortunately that might not be in our cars this time around and you know if that's the case then we'll just adapt to the situation and do it that way yeah so a lot of these kids that you were helping out at these schools did they know what smash brothers was some of them knew it some of them knew who I was. Some like it was a mixed bag. It was a mixed bag. You know, one cool thing though, we got, and uh, this is something that I, me and my colleagues try to empower is like, uh, we had a few, a few girls want to join. You know, because it's it's very hard to get girls in gaming because, mm. you know, is there the whole still stigma, a, a stigma, the whole, a stigma? It's some it's some of a stigma around girls not being good at games, and that's. That's not the truth. Like, I would admit that guys and girls think differently, but, you know, to a certain degree. But I still feel that everybody can learn from each other. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that's that's the issue that people don't understand. And I, it, it's just tough for girls to come in to the community be, because there's always jerks and dudes always have something to say to them. Mm. Like, if they... If they lose, they'd be like, oh, see, you're not that great. Go make a sandwich. Go do this. You see, girls aren't that good at the game. Like, you be like, I've been on Twitch chats where girls can't do anything without guys from home saying some nonsense to them. And especially girls like, oh, what was the, that's in the Smash Brothers community. But I'm sure if someone paid her like millions of dollars to leave to go to a game and exclusively, cast a game she'll do it her name is uh vicky kitty yeah yeah and you know she's a real good commentator and she plays the game so she's pretty good at the game as well but she can't even commentate without dudes saying some nonsense to her and sometimes you see her tweets and she and she's just saying like it just seems like very saddening to see her like say things like why you guys always gotta act this way to me why why like why do i even bother sometimes with this community you know like it's it's just bad. Like I, me being a I like, it it just sucks. I feel for girls trying to come into this community. So yeah. that's like one of the highlights of when we do these things out of at, um in schools. You know, we get uh we entice girls to come in and play the game and not feel alienated from anybody because of their gender. Is is the misogynistic tendencies? Uh, is it worse online than it is in person? Or do you still yeah, get that course. even in person? It's worse online. It's worse. It's all these things are always worse online because 
a lot of these guys they no just repercussions. Keep over. Yeah, 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 no repercussions, and they just scared because yeah. they know there's, there's a chance that somebody like me was gonna give them a jab. He, if, yeah, if you hear <laughs> if we literally, yeah, there's some girls I was cool in the community. I was around tournaments, and a lot of dudes knew not to mess with them because you know they had DA looking after them. So or some sure. members in DA and just in general. So yeah, these guys there. They don't be trying that all the time with girls in person because it's like they know there's a lot more at stake, you know. So it's more so online because there's no yeah. strings attached. They don't got to worry about it. You know, they don't got to show their face. They're like anonymous. So that's why people just do that kind of that stuff online. But it's still hurtful to females regardless if it's in person or online. Yeah. So the DA kind of double as bounces security at some of these events? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. I wish that um, them out. During, the t- during the time that um that Mewtwo King was in Delhi Alliance, I wish that he hung out with us a little bit more. Hmm. And I would try to get him to come to hotels, but uh, come to hotel rooms with us to chill. But I think sometimes people in the community, they would try to get him to stay with them instead. instead. And the thing I didn't like about that is his supposed, some of the people that were supposedly his people they would rob him of his own money, like his tournament winners. He never used to carry around, um, a, you know, debit cards and all that. He actually had people kind of looking after his well-being, but some people used to take advantage of him. They used to sleep in a hotel room. So the cash he had from tournaments, he would, sometimes people would steal it from him. What? And yeah. And it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. And, you know, there's nothing I could do or people in DA because he wasn't with us in these hotels. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I have not ever encountered anybody trying to steal anything from DA when they would when anybody would stay with us or well, we would be, stay with them. It would be hotel. too risky, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> man. They, they know they know not to do it, but for the most part, DA would usually bunk up with each other in hotels. Anyway, and but if people wanted to come and chill with us, they could. Yeah, but they knew better than to do these kind of things. But to me, it's like, why are y'all doing these things? Like, come on. Yeah. So what's like Smash Brothers in the hood? Is it is it something that's respected and loved? Or well, here's the here's the funny thing. Or at one point, would it be like, man, what are you playing that for? Here's the funny thing about that, right? Like I said, DA were kind of balanced. So yeah. we are, you know, we some of us were. First off, a lot of people think DA is made primarily from the hood. A lot of us were from the hood because of the documentary. It made it seem like all of us was from the Bronx. Only like two <laughs> members of DA was from the Bronx and the hood hood part of the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. Me, I was from Manhattan. I was in Lower East Side. My area wasn't bad at all. It was a pretty nice area. Back in like the 80s, early 90s, it was bad because you had Latin Kings, you had all the gangs. But then the time I basically moved over there to with my stepfather and my mother, yeah. it wasn't that bad. You know, it started becoming slowly gentrified over there. So it wasn't that bad. Uh, one of my best friends that I used to live across from, across from me, like a block away from me. Same area, not bad. Um, Papa Dave, he lives in Jersey. Not a bad area. I think, actually, when I first met Dave, he was in Harlem. His area was bad. It was the hood. Uh, Chris, from the hood. But for the most part, hood guys didn't bother us. Mm. They didn't really say nothing about us. It's because, you know, I guess we blended in with every community. Like, you know, we fit in the hood and we fit in the community. Oh, the only time we didn't fit in was when we was kind of talking crap in the community. They look at us like, who is these big black guys, Spanish <laughs> dudes talking all this crap? We we scared of them. We ain't going to say nothing to them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but for the most part, <laughs> they, they accepted us. That's cool. That's cool. So uh, how do you find... Uh, trans transferring from melee to ultimate. Like, if you play melee and then you go and play ultimate, is it jarring for you at first, and vice versa? Because uh, well, it's completely it, different how they play. No, it is. Is it is completely different. And I give people who are able to juggle all of the games at once respect, like at a high level. Mm. I think that's people like Wizrobe. Um, I think Esam is pretty much pretty good at both all of the games. Uh, and. I think the Mewtwo King, those three guys, they're really good at at uh, changing around different games. Um, in regards to me playing Ultimate and Melee, I'm 
right i'm able to do it now i'm able to kind of do that and i used to do it even with um with project m and melee i was in but those games were kind of similar but um yeah i was able to kind of blend both games or rather be able to play one game put the other one down because once you reach a certain level as a smash brothers player um you start to be able to turn the off and on switch in regards to what games you play it right. probably would take me maybe a few matches to get used to ultimate again. Yeah. But for the most part, I have the muscle memory to pick up ultimate. The only thing I'll have to remember not to do is L cancel and, and uh ultimate. Because yeah. that's 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 like ingrained in you when you play melee. So yeah. then when you go to the other smash and you start doing it, I'm like, oh wow, I gotta get stopped that. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. But do you play Smash Ultimate that much these yeah, days? Yeah. I've seen you do I don't play it, uh, I don't play streams. I don't play it too much. I haven't played it too much recently, but I, I've played it maybe like two or three months ago. And but the game is fun. I like the game. To me, honestly, I know people are like, what's the matter with you, Wes? I think overall, like if you look at the whole scope of Ultimate in regards to content, um replayability. And characters, character roster, and uh, music and character balance. Ultimate is the best smash. But as far as just notoriety, nothing beats melee. Like the history of melee, nothing, nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. Nothing. Mm. The game is the is the longest. I think melee has the longest and the biggest like running community. If that even makes sense what I said, but it's it's the melee is just the community that's been around the longest. It's it's the biggest community that's been around the longest. Because think about it, what community has is like melee that's been around for twenty like twenty years. I think what is it twenty or twenty one? Twenty years. Let's just yeah. say twenty years. And yeah, it's twenty years, and still players are getting picked up. Yeah, on yeah. teams for this. I can't think of no other game. Because even really Street Fighter, it. everyone just migrates to the new one. Yeah, they just yeah. migrate to the other next Street Fighter. But Mel- uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee, nope. They just go, to, they just stay there, and they still able to get on teams. Look at Mango. Yeah, Mango got picked up a team, and it's an old game. That's crazy. Do you think the Smash Brothers, uh, or the Melee community specifically, will have a meltdown if Nintendo launched like an online? the GameCube online service and then release oh, they'll, Melee. <laughs> they'll, they'll go nuts. Oh, you're talking about if they... Because you know they, they, got the, the they, virtual, got the, they got the, the Nintendo 64 thing? online yeah, yeah, yeah. on the Switch now, but if they did like a GameCube one and announced it or launched it with Melee, it would be... An so you don't need the console and the old school TVs and all that jazz. It'll, it'll, be a, uh, it'll be silly for Nintendo not to do that. They'll make so much money. But here's where here's the here's the deciding factor for that. It it's only going to work out if they're gonna sell. They're still gonna sell because they're gonna get those casual people, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. But the diehard slippy guys, they're not gonna convert unless they have rollback. If they don't got rollback, nobody from the slippy era is gonna play it. Because oh, you need, right. yeah, you need you need rollback. You need rollback for a game like Melee. You can't just toss Melee on the Switch and then think everybody in mom was gonna do it. But yeah. it's probably still gonna sell. So yeah. it would be stupid for Nintendo not to do it, regardless if they got rollback or not. You know? Yeah. I think it'll be smart for them to hire slip uh, hire fizzy. Hire fizzy. That was one of my theories in one of my videos that when Nintendo was teamed up with Panda Global Gaming, that because uh, they said that they was going to do Smash Ultimate and Melee. I think Melee Online, I think, or something to that uh, degree. Yeah. So I'm thinking that their best bet is to just hire Fizzy and his team to to handle Melee just in general and just throw it online and see mm. what happens from there. Or just Nintendo stop being cheap. <laughs> and just and just do rollback. <laughs> they got hand over fist money. Come on, man. They do, but they can't even get their Nintendo sixty four online stuff right. So I'm not holding my breath. Know. Yeah, I know it doesn't make any sense to me. I yeah. just can't put my head around it. Like one of the biggest companies, gaming companies, or if not the biggest company, 
I know it's one of the long, uh, longest running companies in regards to gaming, and they still can't get this right. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. So do you actually get any time these days to play not only Smash, but video games at all? Or are you just yeah. too busy? Well, part, of, part of my content on, on YouTube or just Twitch, I just look for different games to play. How, I like beat how, them up. But how often would that be during a, during a week? Oh, that well, right now it's tough. My schedule's been everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to balance out a a really good schedule to where I could do all of that because part of my my content creation journey, um, I'm more of a, a variety content creator. So I like to dab in everything. Like not only I do you know melee content or just mass content, I like just uh doing things for mobile games. I'm very heavily into indie developers because those guys need as much help as they can get to get their games out. And I like, and eventually maybe in the future, I could develop my own game. Um, I'm into, you know, health, fitness, and just into the little things that go on in the world, like the silly stuff that goes on in the world. So it's mm. a bunch of stuff that I like to do and talk about. But, uh, and I do work on little projects for indie developers. Like I help beta test some of their games to help them Oh, cool. figure out what's the best course of action for their game yeah yeah random question before I, I, I wrap up but um yeah are you ever wearing sunglasses and walking down the street and people mistake you for Royster 59 Royster 5 no, no. They, they've they've mistaken me for my little sister or rather no my little sister and other co-workers of mine they mistake me for like little Romeo they mistake me for <laughs> for Dane from um what is this team? I think it's Portland. Yeah. Him. Uh random random stuff. They they yeah. I've heard I think one person say worse than five not yeah. If you're wearing the shades, I think you would. Like if you wore the sunglasses like he does. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Some people I think you and another person said that. Yeah. Somebody when I had my long hair, people called me Andre three thousand. It was funny, <laughs> man. Yeah, I get mistaken for a whole bunch of different celebrities. It's funny. Do you roll with it? You like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's me. Yeah, I'm on one person. I, one person I did it, but everyone else it didn't work. You know, yeah, as yeah. you say, I look like them. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, uh, Wiz, it's been a pleasure. Thanks, thanks so much for taking time out. Uh, if people Appreciate want to follow it. you and all your streaming and your YouTube channel, what's the best place or best way for them to do that? Oh yeah, my YouTube channel is called the Legendary West. Yeah. Um, they want to follow me on Twitter. It's Legendary West 7. And if they want to follow me on Twitch, where I'll go live, play different games, train in melee, make these slippy kids cry, rage quit. <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter at, I'm sorry, Twitch, uh, the Legendary West as well. Cool, man. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, I appreciate you taking the time out. I, know I appreciate you, you having a, me. You got a crazy schedule, man. So yeah. uh, I very much appreciate you doing this. So. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thanks. And um, continue to grind, man. Yeah, man. For sure. For sure. Once I uh, get my TV, because I'm, I don't have a TV at the moment, but I'll be keen to jam you at Smash. No problem, man. Yeah, I'm, well, done, I'm, I'm done. I want to see how I stack up against the the, the goat, because I actually use Samus as well. So. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. But I haven't. I haven't played ages, play. so I'll be a bit rusty. But yeah. I hope be... you. I hope you de rust, man. <laughs> yeah, I might. I might play a few games. Uh -huh. Get my cred up first, and then, <laughs> and then we can, and then we'll make it happen. Yeah, cool, bro. All right. Uh, well, that's the show, everyone. Make sure you share, like, and subscribe. And until next time, stay safe. Take care, everyone. Peace.